Hey, if you're building video games, then pay attention because this video is going to be very useful for anybody who has systems in their game, which is probably just about anybody. We're going to cover abstract classes and how to use an abstract class to build an ability system that allows you to do just about anything. I pulled this out of my multiplayer mastery course. It works online with multiplayer stuff, but this will also work completely fine with single player. And you'll see that we won't actually be diving into or looking at any multiplayer stuff at all just using this in a single player context. If you look right here, you can see I've got a character ability scriptable object, and that's what we're going to be using today. Scriptable objects from an abstract class. We've got a use method that takes an owner and a target. These are the things that are owning and using the ability and the thing that the ability is targeting. Of course, we can have this target multiple things if we want or target a specific position. We'll talk a little bit about that later, but for most use cases, cases, this is what you want. Before we go any deeper, let's take a look at an example so this actually all makes sense. Here I've got a character that can move around by right clicking. Again, this is multiplayer, but doesn't matter what kind of game you're in. I've got another character that I can use abilities on by left clicking. If I left click on this guy, there we go, I can do some damage to him. Now if I change my ability, say I wanted to do an ability that heals, I could hit Two here, it's going to change over my ability index, and I can click, and suddenly this character is getting heals. I can also do things like shrink them down to make them tiny, or grow them to make them large, or whatever other type of ability that I can come up with. So, how does this work, and how do these abilities all get used? Well, you see here that I've got a selected ability index. I'm really just selecting an ability from all of my available abilities, which are these scriptable objects. You can see right down here here in my prefabs folder, which is kind of a lie, it's prefabs and scriptable objects. I have a couple different scriptable objects here that are all different character abilities. This one's a character ability, melee attack, and does 10 damage. This one's a grow that modifies the size by, <coughs> what is that? plus 64%. Uh, sorry about the cough there. A small heal. Well, it's actually a pretty big heal. It heals by about the same amount as the damage and so on. So let's take a look at how these work, how abstract classes come together to make this all very possible and just how simple it is. First, let's go look at the prefab manager and its abilities list. Right here, you can see on this prefab manager, I have a list of all four abilities that you just saw me, saw me use. Three of them I created in the last five minutes. And in there, that's just a list of abilities. When I want a character to use one of these abilities, I get the ability at that index and then call the use method, passing in the owner, which is this, the thing that actually is using the ability, and the character that I've targeted. Now this doesn't have to be all abilities. We can filter this down so that they're by class or maybe by abilities learned or whatever else. But here I'm just using all of them as a simple example. If you wanna learn more about that, just make sure you're subscribed. We'll dive into some of these deeper ones. So I call use on the ability and if I hold down left control and click it takes me right to this abstract void use method so where is all the work done how does this actually happen if we look at all of our character ability references which is just shift f12 and if I drag my window over here, let's just show you how to use this because Shift F12 is an important one. Down here at the bottom, I can see all of the different places that are using my character ability. There's one here in heal. There's one here in melee attack, modify size as well. Let's look at the melee attack first. This one is pretty simple, but I mean, they're all pretty simple to be honest. And it's a scriptable object, but it's only a scriptable object because it's inheriting from character ability. Remember, if I go here, character ability is a scriptable object, not a mono behavior or a normal class. So that's going to make this a scriptable object by default. We add the create asset menu so I can go create those scriptable objects that you saw in that prefab folder. And for this one, it's called melee attack under character ability slash melee attack. It's just the default name and the folder where you find it. It has a damage amount, which is just an unsigned int. I want it to be always positive for the damage. So I just force it right there in the data itself. Then we have a use method. The use Use method is overriding that use method that was in the base class. That's this one here in the character ability. This abstract method must be implemented for our class to actually compile. If I don't implement this, say I named this use2, 
try to do a build, I'm going to get an error saying that this does not implement the method use. So you can see it right there on the screen. I'm pointing to it. It's somewhere around here, but you can see it right there. I'm going to undo that though, and we'll take a look at what use does. Use first reduces the health of the target. It's using this shared, it's just some shared data for the multiplayer stuff. It's modifying the current health. You could just modify your health however you do your health. And then if the health goes down below zero, we tell the target to die. Pretty simple, right? Pretty easy to do. We could do different types of attacks here and different effects. Let's take a look at a couple other things though. We also had a heal. Heal does something very similar. It just figures out the amount that we want to heal by figuring out how low the player actually is and picking the minimum of either the heal amount or the amount that they're missing. So if they're missing three health and I try to heal for 10, I just note that that's three. <clears throat> and then with that, the reason for that is so that we can well modify the health to the amount, but then we can keep track of the total amount of healing done on the player. And this is where it starts to get useful to have these different scriptable objects for these different abilities and effects. If you just built one system that's like a switch statement or something else that's starting to deal with these, it's going to get complicated. The methods are going to get big. It's going to get long and large, especially when you want to start doing things beyond just modifying some health and modif or modifying a single stat or something. Let's take a look at one more though that shows how we can kind of reuse something. When it comes to reusing modification things, I would ne almost never recommend that you have like a modify health that goes up and down. Separate those out because the use cases are almost always very different. You want to deal with things different, have a damage and a heal. But sometimes you do want to have some more generic ones like we have, if I hit Shift F12 again, Modify Size. Modify Size is the one that I use for the shrink and the grow. Here I just have a size percent that's a float and has a range so we have a slider. We don't go too high or too low. And then on the use, we just set the scale to one times that percent. Now, if you wanted this to remove, you'd have to add a little bit of extra logic, not in the scriptable object though, probably in the thing that's actually changing size so that it could reset. But this does the job and kind of shows you how you can have a grow and a shrink. They both do this similar thing, but in a different direction. There are different abilities that your player could have, and you can have a different icon and, and so on for them based off of the scriptable object. And if you want to add more onto your character abilities, you'd probably put some base data down at the abstract class level. Things like a serialized field for a into like a mana cost, something like that. Or if you wanted to have a you know, reuse time, a serialized field that's a float for a reuse delay equals whatever, three, three seconds as a default. You start to store this data off in here, and then you could build upon your abstract class a little bit more and start to put some of these core things into the use method or into another use method and have an abstract method that that use method calls upon. So to do something like that, we'd have like a public void activate with costs and reuse. This is a terrible name, but just to give you a very good idea of exactly what it's doing. And in here, we would reduce our mana, reduce mana and deal with delay and then call use. And in this case, oh, we'd pass in our, our owner and our target, which would need to be parameters of this activate with costs and reuse. So let's pop these right up here. And then we would do something like turning this to be protected. And then we would have to implement the use part here in all of our subclasses, but the core of it with the activation that reduced mana and did delay and stuff would be in that part, the activate part. Now I would avoid doing that until you're sure of exactly which things are definitely going to be the same. If not everything's gonna have mana, then maybe figure out exactly where that cost part goes. If not everything is gonna have a reuse, then maybe it not every don't have the reuse part there. Think about it for a little while on exactly where you want that to be, but you can call your protected abstract methods from your public method and figure out the exact flow the way that you want it, or just start with a public method and then convert it over later. Now this is 
one of a few patterns that you can use to build out abilities. And I think that it's an easy one that's pretty extensible. It works great for a bunch of different types of games, especially where you want to start cranking out different types of ability effects. You're going to be doing a bunch of different things or kind of experimenting. You can make these things very easily, add them on, modify the data, and it's easy to modify and change the way that the abilities work or whatever other thing you have. It could be an item or any other thing type of system where you're modifying the way that actions work it makes it much easier anyway i feel like i'm kind of rambling now and been going on for a while if this was helpful don't forget to like subscribe and share and if you have other ideas for systems like this or questions about how to use abstract classes make sure that you just drop them in the comments down below I'd be happy to try to answer as many of them as possible and if you want to see how all of this works in multiplayer development you can check out and join the multiplayer mastery course we're going live with the dedicated server part early January 2024, but you can also just do it all offline at your own pace or whatever and come join us in the live class. All right, thanks again. See you in the next video. Bye.